All right, in section 4.3.3, we'll be talking about the powers of a square matrix. We've already seen that a square is only defined for a square matrix, and so that's the only type of matrix for which these powers will be defined. All right, since matrix multiplication is associative, one thing that's nice is we don't need to put parentheses when we multiply many matrices. If I have A, B, C, D like this, whether I partition this way or if I do this, all of these different ways of putting parentheses would all be equal. And so I don't even need to put them. I can write just A, B, C, D. And the same thing for A, 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 A. I don't need to tell you we take this product first, that one second. And so because of this associativity of matrix multiplication, I am able to define powers of matrices. All right, so if A is a square matrix and R is a non-negative integer, the rth power of A is, well, if A, 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 so if R is bigger than zero, then all you have to do is put A R times next to each other, so you multiply R times. If R is zero, A to the zero, well, if you think of it, if I have a number like this, we use one because one's the identity of the multiplication on real numbers. And so here we'll be using the identity matrix um, for our a to the zero, because that's our multiplicative identity. All right, so let's try some of them. Um, a is 1, 2, 0, 1 in example 4.3.8. I'm asked to compute A2, A3, and A4. So let's start with A2. It's A times A, so I'm going to take these and these. I'll get 1, I'll get 2 plus 2, I get 4, I get 0, I get 1. If I do A3, that's 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 1. Um, I can take whichever product I want first, but notice that I've already computed A squared, so this part right here I already know, so I'm going to replace it um, right away by 1, 4, 0, 1. Uh, 1, 2, 0, 1, and so that will give me 1, um, 6, 0, 1. And I'll do the same for A4. A4 is A, 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 A. So I can take A cubed multiplied by A. I don't have to start from scratch. I just have to multiply by 1 extra A. And so I get 1, I get 2 plus 6. I get zero and I get one. All right, so that's it. Now in B, I'm asked to give a formula for A n. I'm not asked to prove it, so it's a bit informal. Um, for A, A is A one. So for n equals one, you get two. For A equals, uh, for n equals two, you get four. For three, you get six. For four, you get eight. It looks like A n would have, well, the first part here is, common to all, and then it looks like this one is 2 times n. All right, so that would be my guess for a formula. I could prove it using induction if you've seen induction in another class. All right, in this specific case of a matrix A, I was able to find a formula for A n pretty easily, but for more complicated matrices A, this is an advanced problem. Um, you could learn it if you wanted to, if you took a second linear course, either here or at university. So you can learn a method to find um, formulas for A n. All right, so one thing that we learned in this example, and you could see it right here at play, uh, one thing that we learned is that if you take um, R, A, R, and A, S, that's the same as A, R plus S, and A, R to the S, that's A, R, S. All right, this is the same thing that you have for real numbers. Let me prove it, not because um, I find it especially enlightening for matrices, but it shows you why it's true for real numbers, and it shows you that it wasn't a hard um, identity there and it's not a hard identity here. So if I want to write what this is, 
Well, I need to put a next to itself our time, and then I need to do the same thing. S time. Well, I have a next to itself r plus s time, and so I get r plus s as the power of a. All right, and the same thing here. If I look at what r a r to the s means, it means a r a r a r, and so I have s of these. But for each one, I have R of those. Sorry, let's finish. And so I have S blocks here, um, S blocks. And then for each block, I have R. And so that means in total, I end up with R times S of A. And so that's why this is A R S. The proof doesn't use the fact that A is a matrix. It would be the exact same proof if I had a small A and I was thinking of um, just real numbers.